morning, folks. This is the 5th of July Aries Working Group call. Um, we have some good stuff coming up and some uh, progress to make. Uh, this is a Hyperledger call, and so the uh, antitrust policy and code of conduct are in effect. Links here in the agenda, agenda link in the meeting chat. Um, you are welcome to add yourself to the attendees list or make any other changes that would be useful to the group. Is there anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves? I'm glad to see so many returning regulars. Um, uh, we have still on the announcements list, but I have also down later in the agenda the, the marketing working group. Maybe I'll just leave that down for a report further down below. Are there any announcements that should be on our list but are not? All right. Any projects want to share some release status or work updates? Yeah. Um, Aquapi 082 was released. Uh, so released last Friday. I believe it was Thursday or Friday and uh, out and available. We're also about to merge um, the dropping of Python 3.6. So that will be the next release. Um, it's just completing. Um, it's literally running now and will be merged as soon as the tests complete and we'll have dropped 3.6 from Akapai. Uh, awesome. Uh, any progress on the GitHub Actions weirdness that you reported last week? Yeah, that can be removed. Um, that was uh, that was solved. Um, it was a resource issue and some uh, and and some rules around uh, Python that uh, basically was essentially the amount of parallelism allowed auto, uh, it defaulted to, and we needed more parallelism in the GitHub Actions in order to run them. So what did you add more parallelism or reduce the need for it? What was the answer there? Just add more. Um, change the default. We were letting it default to the number of threads. I think it was. I'm not sure if threads is the right term in this case. But anyway, the number of threads. Um, and it needed more than the default. So it figures out the number of cores you had, adds, you know, doubles it and adds two or something like that. And it needed more than that the particular run we were trying to do cool yeah that, that is good to understand um cool uh excellent other projects that want to share updates awesome thanks for all the good work out there um today um i um Check in with the uh, uh, Aries Marketing Group and uh, and uh, and and what's going on there. Um, I the main topic that I'd love to discuss today is is how we. This is just the notes I, I pulled from last week, but uh, given the work that's been done, um, I I feel a sense of urgency around this, um, and I uh, I, I want to talk about um, the potential for a community coordinate, uh, coordinated update and what those tar date targets might actually be to get this done. Um, and so I'm grateful for the work that's brought us to the point where we're going to have this conversation. I'd love to have that. And then, uh, and then we will definitely have time for some open discussion today. Um, I was trying to not overpack the schedule. We've had a lot going on and a lot of great progress. Thank you, Stephen, last week for um, for handling the meeting while I was out. Um, but uh, I wanted to just make sure that we had time to sort of bring up any topics that we need to discuss as a as a group, um, so that we could make sure those got uh, those got discussed. Um, any changes or additions or modifications to the agenda before we get going? All right, uh, Helen or Alex, any, oh, Clesio? Um, I, I think it's worth mentioning that from, from the bifold side, we're introducing a little bit of a, what I've been calling ephemeral or temporary connection to address um, QR code density. And that is uh, encompassed around Go codes. And if we have time, we can talk a little bit about that. Yes, that's an excellent discussion. Um, okay. 
Excellent. Uh, Helen or Alex, any uh, updates that you want to share? Yeah, 30 seconds. There'll be a survey this week. We'll send it out. Please respond. We're going to try and promote it with a blog post for Hyperledger. So look out for that. We'll also put the link in next week's. Um, we'll put it in this in this meeting uh, notes as well when it's there. Retrospectively, we'll put it in for next week as well. Perfect. So this, I, I couldn't tell if the, if you had already updated the service from last week. I didn't know if there was going to be a survey last week and now there's one. Anyway, either way. No, we, we got we got attacked by stat days, but yeah, it's out this week. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yes. Oh, by the way, happy Canada Day and Fourth of July or Insurrection Day if you're from England. Um, so uh, we've had a bunch of holidays the first part of this. So. Um, um, I'll, I'll also just say that uh, we are we're, the uh, marketing meeting will be the last Tuesday of every month, and it is in the group's IO. Like people should be getting it, <laughs> you should see it pop up. But um, please forward that to anybody in your organization and your, uh, you know, your team that might be interested in contributing to the the work we're doing there. Um, we should have some great new. Um, descriptions and, you know, boilerplates and taglines and all kinds of, we're working on all kinds of fun stuff. So if you have um, a, an opinion about those things, we would love to have you. Excellent. And thank you for the work that you're doing there. Okay. We will look an eye out. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for a survey so that we can better understand stuff and, uh, and, and looking forward to that. Um, okay. So we've got, um, uh, Stephen, you covered this last week, um, and, and I haven't had a chance to dive in to see what other progress we've actually had, um, but uh, but we we are very near uh, the uh, did peer three, which is of course the the, the smaller version um, of, of a did peer two uh, when it, that's already been established, and then we have this uh, the, this legacy did um, uh, transformation doc that was written up by Timo. Um, to talk about uh, how to make this actually happen. Um, and so um, uh, that's that's kind of the the issue here. Um, we there's some open questions here. Do we want to support the, the didcom v one en entries um, uh, and and some of these other other things, how do we transform this? Um, I uh, figuring out some of these things would be fantastic so that we can move forward and actually pick target dates that we plan to implement these by. Um, so here's the, here's, yeah, if, if people haven't seen this, this would be super important to take a review of. Um, and I know it was, in the, it was linked in the meeting last week. Um, and, uh, and this is the, the, the transformation into a did peer two. Um, that can then uh, that can then make this happen. Um, and so uh, here's the steps to go through and kind of make this happen. It's a transformation. So this should be a, uh, a deterministic thing. You, you stick in the information, you get the same thing out every time. Um, that allows it to be done by both parties um, so that uh, so that any sort of legacy dids in use can be updated um, and in referred to by the by the new values there. And so this is a good candidate because of the of the interaction on, on multiple sides for a community coordinated update. Uh, and this is a process we've done several times before when there does uh, have, we do have something that is important enough to, to uh, coordinate the deployment of. And so in this case, uh, there are phases to that. And the first one is to accept the new, uh, but default to the old. And then we, and then we default to the new while still accepting the old. And then the last phase, of course, is to, is to fully deprecate the old and, and we just all use the new going forward. Um, and so um, this, is, uh, this is something that is necessary to happen for a, a wide variety of reasons, uh, not, uh, not including but not limited to uh, moving to didcom v2, where those, those legacy dids will, will not uh, have a way to function anymore. And so giving them a, a path forward to a format that will make it work um, is pretty important for moving that forward. Um, any comments or questions specifically about the, the current state of, uh, of this migration? Did the tier three um, changes get made? It's a darn good question. So, so I, yeah, so check the pull requests. 
Yeah, um, no, that's, okay. that's a super old one. Yeah. So Daniel Blooms, we need to get a, for sure, we need to get an issue in for Daniel's co comments. A PRN, you mean? For, yeah, for these? PRN. Um, we do. So um, that's uh, definitely something we need to have happen. Um, I'll go ahead and drive that forward. Um, yeah, I, I could do, I, I just don't know well enough how to describe. I never understand the multi base multi codec and how to describe it. So I didn't get it in. Um, the changes are pretty, pretty small. And then we do have to look at um, the other one to see why that example doesn't work. Um, uh, we can, um, uh, I don't see Alex here today, um, but, uh, but we can also submit other PRs in order to make this happen. So. Yeah. Anyone um, can call well, Alex's has already been merged. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Which means it's easy to anyway, submit a PR. I'll go ahead and drive that one. Um, uh, to, to make that occur, uh, to make sure that occurs this week. Um, so uh, there is uh, th this code as well, um, or th th this document uh, as uh, that, that's been described. Um, we there's a couple things that need to happen. One of the things that we should probably do is is uh, is throw it into a a um, an Aries RFC. This uh, independent of debate about where things ought to go, this is distinctly an Aries problem. Um, in the sense that this this is a, a, a sort of an Aries historical thing, and so I, I think it, it, it very uh, perfectly lands as an Aries RFC, um, which means that, uh, that that upon verification of this, we we would need to to get that in there so that we can link to it, and then of course the the creation of a community coordinated uh, uh, update RFC that uh, that references the process, but also sets some target dates. Um, and so there is code uh, w within um, uh, AFJ that does this. So there's actually some reference. Um, and then we've got test vectors as well um, to, to make that happen um, and uh, to, to, to make that work. So um, there's also code here um, to actually perform the, the, the translation you know, right within the, the documentation here, which is pretty fantastic. Um, and so if you haven't looked at this, this is critical to look at. If, you're, if your code uses uh, legacy DIDs in any form, um, then, uh, then we want to make sure that we understand this process and it's going to be a smooth transition. Um, so one of the other open questions that I have, and Stephen, you raised this last week, was, um, well, you, you mentioned it, you may not have asked the question. Um, Timo's document describes the transition to, to DID or to DID peer 2. Did peer three is a uh, more co co compact form of, of a did peer two did when it's known to both parties. And so the question is, do we include in the community coordinated, coordinated update a, a transition all the way to did peer three for those existing connections since they will be, or do we leave it to just did peer two um, and, and not include the move to did peer three? I think we should go to did peer three for sure. I mean, the the reason we have we already have exchanged a did doc. We've already transmitted the did doc. Um, so it seems odd to transmit it over and over. The did peer the use of did peer two should only be to enable the calculation of did peer three to me. Right. Uh, for sure, I, I don't argue with the advantages of did peer three at all. The only question I had was about uh, the the burden of doing so. The benefit of involving in a community coordinated update, coordinated update is we all get to did peer three faster. The downside is that it could take a little bit longer just because of the additional stuff to implement. The stuff being once you have a, a yeah. single transition and don't even ever and then throw the did peer two away. It's it's just another step in the in the algorithm, right? Oh, it totally is. It's not a computational issue. It's a code writing issue. In in the sense that there's more code to write if you're going to to did period three instead of just the transition. To did I would think that would be one line of code. 
to make the tr transition between two and three? I mean, all you do is you take, you know, once you have a did peer two, you just do a single what amounts to a translation and you get a did peer three. You just, yeah, no, you just my, own, my only point is you have to write that translation and test it and make sure it's working correctly and everything else. It's, it, it is a, a little bit of additional code writing burden to make that happen. Yeah. I mean, the good news of doing it is that we all get to did peer three, which is efficient. And so that might be nice to bundle together. But I was curious if anyone was nervous about including that just because of the code burden. I don't think anyone's arguing the, the advantages present by, by making that change, just the effort involved. Any comments or thoughts there? Okay, I don't hear any objections. Um, I'll go ahead and write the community coordinated update with a move to did peer three um, and included in that process and, and that gets us there. It's not a hard move, uh, but there, there is some, there's a, a, you know, some code to write and some implications of, of, of storage and everything else. Um, it also means that if you're going to support did peer three, we need to make sure that we, you know, handle the, the other aspects of, of that. So, um, so very cool. Um, here's the question. Um, at what point are we seeking to have this uh, fully adopted? Uh, what what timeline do we think uh, we can uh, dedicate to uh, to this move as a community? I think I I certainly feel a sense of urgency around this uh, as it's something that uh, that is a, a, a sort of a weird historical piece that we just need to lose. Um, and will ease any future worker collaborations or integrations or anything else because of, of eliminating that weirdness. Mm -hmm. So here we are in July. We are halfway through the year. Um, how how fast for for those of us maintaining code bases do you think we can uh, make this change and have it deployed? Just kind of rough timeline. Can we do it in three weeks? That's really, really fast. Uh, working, I'm just. Uh, we're working on it now. I'm just not sure how long it's going to take. Hopefully, so, just weeks, but I don't know. Um, for for those of the so again, we're maintaining of by and then we rely on AFJ. I don't see Timo. Is anybody on AFJ on the line? Well, yes, it's me, but I'm not sure how much time it will take. <laughs> but yeah, probably, probably we can we can do it in. <clears throat> I would I, say in a month. Might, might yeah, I'd say I'd say a month. It's probably reasonable because uh, again, some some projects already have their own priority established. Um, and what does it mean for the projects? Um, are we talking Akapai, FJ? And I mean, every maintained code base. Uh, so that would, uh, there, there may be some trickle up effects to bifold, although that relies upon AFJ. So yeah. hopefully there's shared benefit there. Um, and then any other projects that want to remain compatible there, um, I think would be important. So um okay i can't speak to those yeah. but I, I think uh, as uh, ariel says about a month for fj slash by fold um akapai yeah. not sure Stephen. yeah I, 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 will, I will i will make sure of uh, talking about this you know, on tomorrow tomorrow's meeting maybe a so we can we can work on it as soon as possible uh given the pioneering effort by Timo, and I think there's already existing code in AFJ for this. I think there's a decent chance it will be fast for the AFJ community, but the, the, we can certainly hear back. Um, that's excellent. Uh, I would, uh, so what I'll go ahead and do, given that, is that I'll, I'll go ahead and attempt. We also have summertime and vacations and a handful of other things kind of creeping in here. Uh, so what let's do is I'll, I'll go ahead and write a community coordinated update that, um, that, uh, proposes some timing that's that that's all, all you know uh, in line with with those uh, with those goals, um, and then 
uh, we of course can you know argue about the the dates and the details um, you know against that PR specifically. So we'll go and make that happen. Um, okay, cool. So. Uh, we're aiming for did peer three and the, the timing, uh, you know, uh, we're talking about about a month. Um, and that's, uh, and that's, that's great. I, I'm really hoping this doesn't take us like, a, you know, six or eight months to pull off. I'd rather this happen much, much sooner. And, uh, and we can make that all go away, um, which is fantastic. So um, we, uh, you know, making progress in these areas will be really, will be really cool. Anything else about the unqualified did migration that we need to talk about today? Awesome. We'll report back next week with some uh, with some stuff to talk about uh, and evaluate and, uh, and and make some changes to. Um, in that way, we can we can move those things forward in a, in a concrete way. So that's awesome. Um, cool. Uh, with that, uh, goal codes. Klesia, do you want to give us an intro to the topic? Yeah. Do you need to screen share or? Uh, no, it's fine. Um, so. We're going to talk a little bit about Go code. Uh, there's two use cases for us that we are going to be starting exploring, leveraging more efficiently. Maybe let's start with that one scanning flow that you have open there. Um, right now, in Bifold, we have introduced, uh, we're currently operating this in the concept uh, that um, when one scan the QR code, we're either waiting for a credential offer or approved request. And, and the app just sits there waiting for one of those things, things to happen, uh, which may create some confusion in the community around messaging. How do you want to just um, connect for the sake of connecting? Um, so we're, we're making some changes on the scanning flow, and we're going to be leveraging the um, Go code for providing a still providing a good user user interface from from a user experience from our from our user research and our user feedback um, our user experience that they scan in the QR code and and the flow to be like one transaction all the way to the point where they authenticate into a system or something uh, or they prove something either they receive something or they prove uh, they prove something. Um, the new flow is going to be around, um, the first question is if that connection is connectionless. Um, if it's connectionless, um, we're going to assume uh, that is for a proof request. Um, and we're going to go through, wait for the proof request to arrive, and which will be, again, almost instantaneously. Um, and then open the proof request screen for the user to, to verify it and then approve and accept, um, share that proof request. Um, if it's not connectionless, if it's a connected, connectful um, flow, uh, then wait for that connection to be ready, to be in a state ready and fully established. And then we look for the go code of that initial connection to invite. Um, if there is no, the, the first step is that if there is no go code, it's going to go through the contact detail screen, which means that it's kind of the chat, the chat message. So it's just going to open the, to that chat item and the user would then have an option to um, start a conversation, start a chatting there. Or um, if, if uh, the, the issue that the, the other party issue slash verify didn't provide any go code, it's going to go to that contact detail screen. And the user will see if a credential offer or proof request arrives there, in addition to the notification part of it. If there is a Go code provided, then um, there is two options. One is a Go code provide for credential offer, um, and in that case, it will again um, wait for a credential offer to arrive, go through open that credential offer, and then wait for the whole flow of uh, share accepting that credential offer. Um, and then you're going to go to the credential list up to the end. Um, and then the last one is if there is a Go code and that code is related to um, proof request or a verifier. Um, again, those are not the real Go code, it's just a pseudo code. Um, then we're going to wait for the proof request and then open that same proof request screen. So that's a that is a new scanning flow that we're proposing. It was just interested to see if there is any feedback from the community around this flow. And I'll pause here for a moment.
So I have a question which is not immediately relevant, will, but will become so. Okay. Um, in DidCom v2, there's no difference between like a connection list and a connected okay. uh, flow. And, and I'm kind of curious how you anticipate modifying that as that arrives. Well, I'm hoping that in a DidCom v2 in the future, we're going to be leveraging Go code more uh, broadly. And therefore, the, that that question about is connectionless is going to not going to be needed. So the scanning from the QR code and a DidCon V2 scenario will go right to the goal code evaluation. Correct. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I I, I like that. So a couple uh, of things. One is presumably <clears throat> as more 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 goal codes are provided, this expands out to do other things, including one that says there should be a goal code about opening, you know, just establishing a connection and nothing else. So there should be, I think, a no or a specific goal code for that last branch. Because I think um, I've already been asked to, you know, can we add this goal code as the way to go to do nothing except establish a connection? Does that make sense? It totally so, does. It does to me anyway. I think it makes sense from the protocol perspective. I'm interested from what is the user experience perspective. I'm like, um, so we're connecting, we're creating that connection. Does the user needs to know about that at all? Or is it a completely hidden thing and why is it hidden? It, it, it wouldn't be hidden. It would be, hey, I'm. it's just that once a, once goal codes are in normal use, they will be used every time. And one of them will be to say, hey, hey, all I'm doing is starting a connection. So are you saying that it would go a goal code for that no evaluation there? Or is are you suggesting another branch? A, a, uh, both, actually. First okay. of all, I think there will be a goal code for, for that no branch. But over time, more goal codes will be added. Yeah, and, and that's fine. Um, just so for this new one, what do you, what is the user experience? Do we we scan a QR code? We're sitting that waiting for that connection to be ready, established. Once it's ready, what do we do about it? Um, it whatever the goal code is intended to do. So, uh, I think somebody said we want to a goal code for um, relationship. Oh yeah, we put in one for relationship, established relationship. I think that was yeah, what the, we thought. Yeah, that would take to the contact details screen. But again, I think we can talk a little bit more. Those are the three options that, that we deal with right now. And I think you're right that this will evolve over time. And I'm just not sure how to document from the RFC perspective. Yeah, I think uh, there, it, that, what I'm saying is I think there is one already for the for the no option, so that should be included there. And and yes, I'm just saying you don't have to document it, but there will be more added in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah presumably yes, it will be add more. That's what we're we're starting with. Um, um one other comment, if I could, um, just for clarification about DidCom two, Sam. Um, we talked a, a bunch about that, about how did COM2 improve things. But actually, the way we use connectionless in currently is to do a proof request. We do a proof request as a connectionless. Um, the constraining factor in many use cases is that the connectionless QR code. And even in did COM2, the proof request is too large to fit in. So you still have to establish a connection, do the presentation request using the connection, and then and then delete the connection if you want it to be ephemeral. So DidCom2 doesn't buy you um, buy you what 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 we thought it would get us. Well, so there's a couple of things. Okay, so, sorry, that'll be the next topic about the QR code density, I think you were talking about. Yeah, sorry. 
let, let just finish this scanning flow. Um, I guess, Akif, you have a question. This is only for the first interaction and the first one operation. It doesn't, it doesn't encompass a sequence of operation. Um, although, as Steven suggested, I think one of those operations could be the execution of action menu that would kind of a drive through a sequence of operations. Uh, but this is just for one operation, either accepting a credential, doing a credential offer, a proof request, or uh, just connect. Yeah, no, I think that's why I put will slash can at, after I asked that question. <laughs> yeah. I would add, and, and I didn't realize this, but because I don't know when this got put in, but it's kind of interesting. Um, there is goal code been added to threads. So the thread decorator has has a place for goal codes. I, I doubt anyone is supporting it, but it's an interesting option um, because it does allow you to um, sequence things along. Oh, I'm I've finished this thread, but now I can add another goal code. I, I don't know. I just throw that out just so people are aware that yeah. it's actually yeah, from us, from the wallet's perspective, we need to manage the expectation or guide the user from the scanning of a QR code perspective. Um, I don't know if the, having a thread there, it helps right now, um, but as our users, again, the scanning of the QR code is the signal that something is about to happen. We just need to guide our users through that something. Yeah. I, I meant that directly in the answer to a, a, a Keith's question about oh. a, a tool for sequencing. Yeah, oh, yeah right. that's an interesting cool. concept. It's, it's, and it's I just want to, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say this is a great start for improving the user experience. So I like it. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so coming to buy folks shortly. Um, I guess the next question then was in relation to the QR code density and which we are also leveraging Go code. Um, so for us, we're having problems with the uh, uh, readability and, and how consistent the QR code is being read and how easily um, based on the, if there is a QR code for a mobile verify feature, for instance, that has a proof request, that QR code is gross and it gets more and more dense. Um, is relative to whatever the proof request is done. If you combine multiple credentials, uh, that QR code will get larger and larger. Um, for what we're introducing in Bifold is the notion of a temporary or ephemeral connection, uh, which means we do establish a connection. Uh, we use that Go code uh, errors.vc verify that once to indicate that this is a ephemeral connection. And upon finishing the transaction, both sides automatically discard or delete the connection. Um, so I scan a QR code. The QR code is more because uh, it turns more of, uh, is more consistent in size. There is very little variation, so it's relatively it's not relatively small and consistent, but it, there is no variation um, when you add a proof request or maybe multiple proof requests. <clears throat> Um, but now it adds the, the easy to scan and that consistent consistency reading um, of that QR code. So the QR code now is it's less dense. Um, it's easier to scan. Um, this is a, I don't know, it's a new concept. I don't know if that's included in the account V2 or V3 or one of those. Um, but it's the idea that it's establish a connection where both par parties are in the agreement that upon completing a transaction or that operation, it will, it will not say keep that connection for a long term. It's only there to facilitate uh, a specific operation. Are you showing this workflow on your screen? Because right now we just see the... No, no, I'm no. not. It's my screen that we're showing. No, there's no, I, I haven't created a workflow for that one. So would this fall in line uh, similarly to that diagram you showed where I would use uh, a specific? Right, there's a scanning QR code. The QR code, for instance, it's, it's gonna, the, the, the Go code is gonna be 
for verifier. Yeah. And then the difference is because it ends with dot once, it will automatically delete the connection. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, I love this. This actually has some uh, some implications. So Didcom v2 um, has a way to hang up the connection to basically say like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. And that's done using the did rotation feature to rotate it to nothing. This is a nice optimization in the case where you know you're going to do it, uh, being able to signal that sort of a thing um, uh, up front for, for particular types of flows like this is not inappropriate at all and will actually map really well between both, you know, using having that used in didcom v1, but also didcom v2. Um, so I, I like that a lot. Um, I think that this is a, a, a good approach. Uh, the original connectionless one was designed to reduce the number of messages back and forth. Um, but it, it, when those messages are efficient, it's not really a harmful thing to have happen um, and does uh, open up for uh, a wider variety of, uh, of cases that can be handled before that connection is thrown away. If there happens to be any negotiations or whatever else or other protocols not VC related that may need several messages back and forth, but then it, the, the, the intent to have that not be a permanent you know, relationship uh, expressed in the goal code is a, is a useful piece there. Mm -mm. All right. Yep. Um, and for us, we're just going to start with the verifier dot once. I don't know if there is any other use cases there or any any foreseeable in the future, but we're just looking from the mobile verifier point of point of view. Start with it's a use case that we have uh, on the hand right now. Yeah. It could grow as well. Yeah, the other generic concept that I'd love to mention is that if we find as a community that there is a set of verifications that are performed a lot, uh, like, you know, where, you know, it's more or less a predefined thing, um, then coming up with, um, uh, coming up with a goal code that matches exactly to that specific thing is also not a bad thing for us to do as a community. That hasn't quite happened yet, um, but I but I think could happen in the future. And I just bring it up so that if someone says, "Wow, why are we why are we going through this dance when like this is a super common thing that like all the software packages do," like that's a perfect application for a goal code that is more specific, not just to hey I want to verify something, but I want to verify something exactly specific. Um, Janelle has a question. With Didcom v2, it's possible to send a, a proof request and create a one-time connection with one QR code. Um, you can, but the size, because of the out-of-band stuff and embedding that into the uh, into the out-of-band invitation, that can get large. Um, and so there's usually efforts to sort of minimize the amount of data that needs to be shoved into a QR code. The, the other related comment there is that in Didcom v2, there's not really the concept of connection versus connectionless anymore, meaning um, you have you get a, a connection if you want with the same amount of effort that it took to get a connectionless one in Didcom v1, and then the parties can decide when they want the connection to go away. Um, and so you from really kind of having a long term versus you know no connection, um, you you end up uh, with a situation where that connection can be can exist as long as it's useful and then disappear. So this this dot once um, uh, goal code is a is a cool way of sort of signaling like we intend this to vanish as soon as the exchange is over, which I think is um I think is a cool move. Yeah, or or more generic, more generic maybe even having I, I think I've been I don't know if I talk in this forum, but maybe have a more of a generic um areas like connection dot ephemeral or forget or something more generic as a goal code. Uh, but the only thing missing is if there is a we need to know what signal when a operation or a transaction is done. Um, so both parties are in agreement that um, it's either one operation or a sequence of operations. There's nothing the protocol that indicates it's done. And I think that'll play a bigger role even um, when we're talking about app to app integration. Um, when for instance, if I open an app for a proof request, um, I need to signal that app that it's done and it should transition back to the um, originator app. Um, right now, the users get stuck in a wallet app and there is no signal to transition back.
Um, one, yeah. Uh, Kim, sorry, your hands up. Um, this seems to indicate that we might want to think about the right to be forgotten here as well. If we're thinking about the concept of saying, hey, we're, we're done with this connection, um, uh, go ahead and clean up and close the connection. Um, there, there might be some additional signaling that we can do there to say, hey, forget everything about me as well. Um, that's not bad. The, uh, so we do have that existing mechanism of sort of hanging up the connection, but there's no uh, nuance to that. Um, having a protocol that says, you know, I'm done and, and here's the, the terms that I'm expressing for that um, would certainly be applicable in, in DidCovey 2. I mean, could be done with DidCovey 1 too, as well, but, um, but I think that that's uh, nicely applicable. I think for some flows, I, I was imagining for, for a minute, Klesio, like why, what types of interactions I would want to just not have remaining. Um, and I came up with a couple of interesting ones, but I'm curious if you have something specific in mind that you're going after uh, with this type of a flow. So for us, maybe of more recent event, it'd be like I'm, I'm scanning a QR code of approved vaccination. I don't necessarily want a record of everybody or collect everybody information or contact about it. I just want the proof, right, from a compliance perspective. Um, and there's other compliance um, use cases where I just need to verify that you are a um, good standing active lawyer, but I don't necessarily want to keep a, or have a need or a requirement to keep a record of those and, and creating a connection, establish a record that is not necessarily always um, wanted. Um, yeah, I, so a thing that popped into my head was a vending machine. <laughs> if I have an interaction yeah. with a specific vending machine, I may not want a long-term relationship with that vending machine, right? And so um, th that would be a good example, or depending on how the architecture is set up, you know, if I'm like authenticating to a door or I'm, you know, whatever else, that, that could be useful. It's worth noting that all of these protocol things are voluntary in the sense that if a user or if a so if software decided to allow and, um, and the user perhaps enabled this, they could they could basically decline the the forget uh, side of things, and then you know if they wanted to retain the, that information about the interaction that happened. And so, from a protocol perspective, of course, it's all voluntary. And then, but but it's still useful from a UX perspective to to know that that's what happened. For example, um, uh, you know connections with the, that I know the other party forgot. I might still want in a history of past connections that show me some information about what I presented or something. But it's likely going to be presented in a UX perspective different than an active connection. So that I can go see the things that happened before that aren't active anymore, but I can go actually see the things that were represented there. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so there is a little bit of question about what is it audit log? What does it mean? Is it an audit log? It means I'm forgetting the connection, but I'm not necessarily forgetting the operation take place that I disclosed something uh, was sent away from my wallet, right? Yes, and and that's so, kind of an open question we haven't developed yet. Yeah, I think those are two different things. We can delete the connection, but not necessarily delete the the records associated with that transaction. So it becomes kind of an orphan records, which is essentially means it's a connectionless thing, you know. It also like having a connection in DidCom v two particularly means that you just know the data of the other party. Yeah, and so like. The, this whether it's a connection or not, I think is mostly a UX handling issue, not necessarily the actual data that we store issue. Correct. Yeah. Y yeah, is the concept of contact, right? So, and maybe with out of band and the whole like uh, uh, reusing connection, we'll make this less of a trouble or 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 a, you know, like the UI being polluted with a bunch of connections. Um, so we'll try this out and, and see how that works. Um, but there's this idea that connections are not necessarily at front and center. Sometimes they're just there to, for a purpose. And, and the purpose is not the connection itself. The purpose is just the operation, the underlying operation that that connection facilitated. Yes, we're, we've not, we've imagined the problem, but not really handled it well, where 
you have different types of connections to different types of things, and that might be nice to organize from UX perspective. For example, if I have connections with IoT devices versus connections with coworkers, I might want those represented differently in the UX, and we're, we just haven't gotten there um, as a community to number one have the problem, and number two, um, you know, decide what to do about it. Yep. Okay. So, so, so the my uh, my only other question is that go code it's a string so we're gonna have to come up with some sort of separator um i don't know i think we briefly talked some time ago i don't know if that has been formalized you mean for the dot once thing or um for if i want to provide multiple go codes we had the multiple goal code discussion a while back and the complicated piece about multiple goal, goal codes is that it balloons the number of possibilities for what are what's actually happening. Um, and so the issue there is that um, the, the, if I have goal code A and goal code B, making very clear about which one I wanna do first or whether they can happen simultaneously or whether I can, uh, I'm looking to accomplish either goal A or goal B, you know, in the presence of two of them um, is, is really complicated. And so we decided that, that uh, at the time anyway, that, uh, that, that a single one was way more straightforward. It's, it strikes me that right now, the only time we have goal codes is in an out-of-band invitation. And the other thing that might be useful is to actually come up with a different way of passing goal codes in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a relationship. Um, in the sense that you're going to send a quick message to the other party saying, hey, I'd like to work together to accomplish this purpose. Um, and, and you could use a goal code sort of with an existing connection to be able to further something. And that would allow you to sort of say, okay, well, we did goal A, now let's work on goal B. Um, and, and that could facilitate that. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. And it just came into my head. Mm. I, I, I don't know yet. Um, but I, I was thinking that for those complicated workflow scenario, multi-steps, I, I thought that action menu would fit better, um, but I haven't really deep explored that much, but interesting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I don't know the answer about multiple goal codes, but that, that was our previous discussion and what we talked about, like why, why we just went with one. That's all I had from Bifold site. Thank you. Awesome. That was a great discussion. Um, we have six minutes left. Are there any other topics that folks want to bring up today? Well, all right then. Thanks for coming to the meeting this week. Grateful for all your work and we will see you next week with more fun and adventure. Thanks folks. Thanks all. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks everyone.